Hello, this is Nick from BIMPURE and welcome to a new video tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to teach you how to create uh, a bat installation detail item family like this one. So there are issues with the default installation tool in Revit, this one that you'll find over here. It's not bad necessarily, but there are some issues with it. The first one is, for example, if I want to place this installation in a wall, uh, Let's pick this line. I can only align uh, through the center of the installation. I cannot pick one of the sides. Uh, so let's bring it here. And another issue is you cannot uh, place it fully on a wall. So there will always be this uh, little gap, right? Because a full element needs to be filled for it uh, to work. And also this is a dumb element. You cannot tag it, it doesn't have unique mark. It cannot be placed in a schedule. While if you're using a detail item family, such as this family, um, it can be scheduled, you can assign mark, you can know how many elements you have inside of the whole project, you can create different types for the width. And something else that is nice about it, I can use the align tool, pick one of the reference lines from the wall, align like this, and do the same thing for the rest of the wall. And the way this family works is that the dimensions will slightly adjust to fill the entire length. Okay, so let's have a look inside of this family so you can understand how it's made. The general idea of the family is that there's a single element that is a nested family. So a family inside of the family that is placed inside this one. And then we're using the array tool to create this. But overall, the family is relatively simple. There are a couple of formulas. So let's create this from scratch. Well, first, let's explore this nested family and see if this is kind of the base units, the base unit that you want to create. So if we were to create this from scratch, let's create a new family. I'm picking detail item family. So I will create reference planes like this. Add uh, dimensions such as this and I can add another dimension that I am going to call W for the width. I can leave this as a type parameter and uh, this one I'm going to call R for the radius. This is going to be instance based parameter. All right, same thing for this one. And for this, I'll probably use a value of about 300. In R, I'm going to set 50 instead and just quickly change the units so the text doesn't get in the way. I'll add two different reference planes over here. I can use an EQ dimensions such as this. And if I look quickly again, there's the H dimension that I'm going to place right there. So H is over here creating a new label, calling this H. This is going to be instance parameter. Okay, now I'm ready to create some lines. The first I will create is going to be a, a, an arc radius. So we'll click this point, this point, and over there. I select this line, click on center mark visible, use the align and lock tool to lock it to these reference planes. Then I select this, click on this, icon to make this temporary dimension permanent and I make sure to use to set the R label so the radius changes whenever this dimension changes well. Okay, so we have the first arc, then we need to create two uh, half uh, arc segment. In this case, it's going to be like this and the other one is going to be like this. Right? And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in the center mark and I'm going to align and lock the center mark like this. Now I can make the temporary dimensions permanent by clicking on this icon, selecting both dimensions and setting the R equal 50 label. Let's change the dimensions once again. Okay, and that's mostly it really. So if we change some of the values, I change uh, this, you see what happens. I will just need to quickly put in a formula. The radius should always be half of the H value. So for this, I will simply type H divided by two. 
which means, for example, if h becomes 80, the radius is going to change to 40 because it should always be half uh, the value to h. So the first step is ready. I will just purge the family to make sure it is clean and I can create a new detail item family. So I'm going to nest this family into the other family I'm just going to create. Detail item, it's right here. Okay, so I'm going back to this family. I can save it and give it a name. Uh, in this case, I call it a bat uh, single. And I load this family into the new one that I've just created. Okay, I've just realized there are some things missing. You'll see it is going to be pretty easy to fix. So I entered the family and I forgot to draw some of the lines, but it's actually extremely straightforward to do it. I just need to do draw the lines like this. And because this should be snapped at the correct point, which means if I change some of these values, the lines are supposed to follow and I don't have any additional alignment lock to create. So I can load this back into family number four with the changes to add the lines. There we go. So this one, I'm going to change its reference to this uh, reference plane to bottom. And I'm going to call it the bottom as well. I'm going to create another reference plane right here, another one higher over there. And this one, I'm going to call H for the height. This is going to be an instance based parameter. This one right here, I'm going to call L1. This is an instance based parameter. I can align and lock this family so just like this. And I'm going to create new reference planes on both sides. It's probably a good idea to set the is reference. So this one is right and this one is left. I will add EQ dimensions. So this one is always centered. I will add a new W value. So I call this W, this should be type based. Let's put it at 300 millimeters. I select this single element. And over here, I will set W to match to associate the parameters from the host family. So the W in this family is always the same as this one. Okay, so H over here uh, should be L1, right? That means that if I change this value, L1 is going to follow around. Like for now, I can keep it at 100, for example. Okay, now I can do an array. I'm using the array tool right here. Uh, I'm using array to last. I'm moving it like this. And then I use the align and lock tool on this element. I can also lock both sides. And now I click on one of the element, select the line, create a new label. And I'm just going to call it AR. This is a type, an instance parameter. So it means now in theory, I can change the value of the AR to control the amount of elements, but this is going to be controlled by a formula. Okay, now something else that I'm going to do is to create the L1 uh, underscore minimum. So this is the minimum acceptable value for L1. This is going to uh, allow me to control the dimensions of these elements. So this is going to be instance based as well. And I'm going to set a ratio for the L1 minimum, just so the proportions look about right. In this case, I'm going to do W divided by 2.5. You're gonna see what it looks like a bit later. Okay, and in the AR formula, I'm going to use uh, round down. And the formula in this case is H divided by L1 minimum. Okay, right now I have nine. But now I need to adjust the L1 formula as well. I will divide the H divided by AR like this. So you can see this is a calculated value. In fact, instead of round down, this should be around up. So this is truly the minimum. There we go. So the, this value never goes above 120. 
So you can see the result. As you can see, we've used a ratio here. So we have the width divided by 2.5. You could play with this. It could be divided by 3, divided by 2. So 2.5 looks roughly right for the kind of symbols I'm trying to have. And that's it, really. That means that then you can change the value, and this is always going to be adjusted. So in this case, the user don't have to worry about the L1 value. Everything is calculated automatically. Right, so one last thing is that with arrays, they have a potential bug if it goes below two elements for a calculated number of uh, detail item in the array, it's going to bug. So we're going just to prevent this by creating a new parameter called arcalc. This is also instance based. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start all over because this needs to be arcalc. This is going to be an integer kind of parameter. Integer, there we go. Yeah, also instance based. I'm going to copy and paste this value. And here I'm going to delete this for the one that is actually used for the geometry. I'm going to say if arcalc is below two, use two instead, else use arcalc. So what this does, let's say that the h is extremely small. Let's say it's only 120. Say the calculated value is a one, but we protect the formula so it doesn't break the family and it goes to two instead. And if it's like 20 or minus 50 or a value that doesn't make any sense, like the family is protected. So we users don't have a, an annoying bug. So that's it, a pretty simple uh, family. You can make sure to set the correct is reference value, no, not center. This should be top. And I have left and right. All good. So I can name this family and load it into the project. And you have a bat installation family component that is much better than the default Revit one. It can be tagged, it can be scheduled, it can be nested in other elements as a nested detail item family. So you can do much more thing with it. And I like the fact that it, you know, when you drag the arrows, it actually goes to the end of the arrow, not slightly with a slight gap. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, check out our new Revit course called Herrick Families. This course will teach you how to create strong, powerful, lean, and efficient families your colleagues will love using. The course focuses on high-level principles and advanced strategies, although it also contains content for family beginners. It includes an ebook PDF, video tutorials, case studies, the mega Revit sample file, access to live masterclasses, and more. Check out the link in the video description to get all the details.